Hi, this is Jim. I'm standing here in this pretty field right off Rosario Court on the west side of San Ramon. And the reason why this field exists is back in 1978, the California legislature passed a law that you can't build within so many feet of an active earthquake fault. And so basically I'm standing right on a fault, the Calaveras Fault, which is part of the San Andreas Fault System that runs throughout California. So uh, if you were to take this path, go north, you'd end up following it down to the tennis courts and you'll see another open space and you'll see that the, um, the path abruptly ends at Norris Canyon. And the reason for that is not that the Calaveras Fault ends at Norris Canyon, it's that that subdivision was built prior to 1978, and so they just built right over the fault. So don't feel too smug if you live on the south side of Norris because faults have a way of moving around all the time. So we don't know exactly where it'll be next time. But for sure, we have a major earthquake fault in our area. Now, the ground I'm standing on right this second is moving northwest at about seven centimeters every 10 years. Um, and I know that because we have precision GPS stations right up here on the hill and also one at, at Los Trampas. Those are managed by Stanford and the USGS. And they record the position of that piece of dirt, you know, you know basically to a millimeter accuracy every minute. And so we can follow over the last decades what this ground has been doing. And it's basically been going that way. Um, not very fast, but over time that movement accumulates and you can think of it as actually compressing this piece of ground between here and, and say Oakland. And that's the reason we have all these hills. It's, they've basically been squished and so it folds to make these nice hills that we, we can hike on. Now behind me you might be thinking, well, shouldn't there be a big crack behind me in the ground because this ground's moving away, it should leave a crack. And actually there is one. There's a thousand multi-thousand foot crack right behind me, but it's all covered up with silt in the San Ramon Valley. Uh, so if you could see through all that silt, you'd see this big V-shaped valley um, going down thousands of feet. But of course, every time it rains, all of this sediment washes off the hills and fills that up. Um, now the other side of the valley has got the ground sinking away, and so there has to be another fault system over there to allow that to happen. And that fault basically runs around El Costa. It's probably easiest to see the scarf if you're standing in the parking lot of the post office. Just look east and that bluff you see, that's the slope at which the ground is sliding away. If you go over to the hospital and look over in this direction, you'll be basically standing on a bluff just like this one, about the same height, the same kind of ground, looking right here. And that's because that ground used to connect here before the Calaveras Fault separated the ground. And now we have this valley, you know, separating us. Um, now, speaking about drainage, there's two ways for water to get out of the San Ramon Valley. One way is to go north through the narrow pass in Alamo. And then it ends up going out through uh, Walnut Creek and out into the, the North Bay. The other way is to go south um, down through Pleasanton, Sunol, and it goes basically through the Alameda Creek and ends up draining into the South Bay. Now, in geologic time, uh, fault action has blocked those passes at various times, and when it does that, the water level rises in the San Ramon and Pleasanton and Livermore Valleys till it overtops the new height, uh, making a lake, and then it drains away and eventually it comes back down again. So these valleys have been lakes part of the time back through the last million years and that's why the topography is so flat. Right this second the drainage is going north from about Norris Canyon northward and is going south from about Norris Canyon to the south but that varies depending on the, <clears throat> as different parts of the terrain get lifted or dropped. It changes all the time. But anytime you look at the valleys, you know, particularly the valley around um, Danville, which is very flat and has a deep cut valley, just think, well, that was a lake bed recently, and 
<clears throat> drainage has, has now cut a big notch through it, which was that, that creek. But you're really looking at lake bend topography. So let's talk some more about the Calaveras Fault. Um, the Calaveras Fault is parallel, roughly parallel to the uh, Hayward Fault. The last time the Hayward Fault let loose was 1858, and it was approximately a 6.8 magnitude. It was enough to level Hayward. Um, of course, they didn't have real good building codes back in 1858, but did a lot of damage. Four years later, the Calaveras Fault uh, let loose. We don't know the exact magnitudes, probably between six and seven. And there wasn't much out here back then. The only structure I really know about is the um, Amador Hacienda, which is roughly, was located about where downtown Dublin is today. And it was leveled by that earthquake. They had to completely rebuild it. Um, so these are significant faults. Um, right now, of course, nobody knows when earthquakes are going to happen. Um, right now, the Hayward Fault is considered like, most likely to go next, um, based on its history going back through the last 10,000 years or so. Um, and it could cause a lot of damage. You don't really know how much damage, because if the fault slip occurs a little bit at a time, uh, let's say 4.0 earthquakes, it's just a nuisance. If it happens all at once with a big 6 or 7, of course, it's widespread destruction. Um, as to this fault, we know less about the Calaveras Fault, but based on that last example, the, the strain released by the Hayward earthquake undoubtedly built up strain on this one, causing that, and that could easily happen again. So we don't know when it'll happen, we don't know exactly how big it is, but you know, take my word for it, this is a big fault, and we should all be prepared, you know, with our, in our home with, you know, adequate water and food and supplies and be, be ready to be cut off. If a big earthquake happens, there won't be any cell phone service and the roads will be disrupted. So, you know, we could be cut off for quite a few days. So everybody should prepare for that. Okay, I hope you found this interesting and all the best. Thank you.